Good morning, Greg. G'day, Chris. How are you? Very, very good. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining us at First National Real Estate. Thank you very much. Happy to be on board. Yeah, yeah. How many years now, Greg, have you been in real estate? Going into my 45th year, Chris. Yeah. It's been a long uh, journey. And how do you, you find your way into real estate originally? Uh, started out in Newcastle with uh, LJ Hooker. Uh, they weren't sure what to do with me, so the, they thought uh, real estate might be an opportunity. And uh, it served me well over the years. I've really enjoyed the uh, journey. LJ Hooker were, in, in those days, uh, the, the premier real estate business in the country. If you got a job at Hooker's uh, in those days, that was as good as it got. And they were also the first agency in Australia to pioneer auctions. Uh, Very big on auctions, yeah. yes. Uh, Barry Ryan I, was one of their original auctioneers and uh, learned a lot from him and seminars to Sydney. And it was a real eye-opener. I started collecting rents uh, on some of the... Um, more infamous buildings around town <laughs> and uh, <laughs> progress through to sales. I reckon you would have been a big softie when it came to rent, wouldn't you? I would have liked you as my, my, uh, my uh, collection agent. Yeah, the arrears list fluctuated uh, <laughs> significantly. From, On the surf, I would have thought. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. there was a bit of downtime. Uh, and then John Ragg was the, uh, the principal at the time and then eventually Laurie uh, Abbott, who um, they were great mentors and uh, yeah, it was an enjoyable experience. The audience is here. Greg and I worked together more than 30 years ago and we worked together for quite a few years where he gave me a lot of instructions in certain, certain parts of being a real estate agent. Signage, Greg, you've got a devotion to the, to the, to the art of the, the real estate sign. Yes, I've got my own uh, theories on that and uh, the modern way seems to be with the, the young folk getting out of university with their graphic artist degrees. Um, I'm just old school. I think the signage just needs to be able to be read at 60 k's. What's there, uh, rather than a short story and every photo? I think people need to make a phone call to inquire as to what's happening behind the sign. With so many years in our industry, it's very unusual and rare to get to ask uh, some of the questions I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you what hasn't changed and what has changed in real estate. So let's start with. What hasn't changed in nearly 45 years of listing and selling? What hasn't changed in real estate? I think it's still a people business. I think uh, a lot of times uh, people have looked to come and work with for me and with me. Uh, they say they're in, into property. They know a lot about property. But property comes and goes. It's the people that you really need to, the community you, you need to be involved in mm. uh, to get the referrals and understand people, have empathy with the people, both vendors and sellers. So I think it's always been a people business. Luckily enough, we're in a location that draws people to it. So we don't have to sell our venue, but still we have to explain what traditionally the new lifestyle is going to be for the refugees from the city, I call them. Mm. We've been blessed as agents today with all of this extra information that we can give to our buyers and our sellers. Well, what, you know, what, what are the, the good things that, in, that have changed that, are, that enable you to be a better agent today? Well, all the things from just the tools that we work with, the photography, the, the, the drone shots, for example, mm. being able to expose a, a rural property of some hundred acres, being able to fly around it and mm. get the feel of the topography mm. rather than have to walk it. Is a, is a great uh, asset to a sales representative looking to uh, look after the stock that we do out in the hills. I notice even in our business now, you're teaching some of the young people or the newer people in our business about topography and about maps and, and, and about the, the lay of the land. Where, where did you come to that knowledge yourself? I'm not sure, but, but hard yards over many acres of paddocks says to me that if you've got a good map, and I had an example only two weeks ago in a, a completely uh, covered camphor forest, that even the owner wasn't sure where we were going. And uh, with my topographic map, I was able to help him. So we made the creek, took some photos of the creek. Mm -hmm. I understood the property a lot better mm -hmm. and therefore could recommend certain ways that we might market this property going forward into the spring. Mm. Markets change, um, confidence changes, uh, interest rate change. Um, 
Right now, a lot of people are under the impression, buyers and sellers, that we're in a new world or that we're in a, in a world that's um, without any past, without any history. My own feeling is that's not the case. But so based on your experience of these types of markets, which yes. you and I have seen over the last 40 years, what, what, what are you observing right now in our, in our local area? The inquiry for this very desirable location is still there. Uh, not to denigrate, but a lot of people don't want to live halfway from the big smoke. They want to get to Byron Bay and the hinterland mm -hmm. because it is a relatively small area stretching from out through Austinville and around Danoon and Mullumbimby. Uh, that red soil plateau country is very limited in size. Of course, you've got the wonderful beaches of Byron. So this whole uh, feeling of... Uh, lost my words now, but this whole feeling of quality because of the desirable nature of the country is always something that will draw people to the area i'm sure one of the staff denzel when we had a sales meeting uh, a week or two ago mentioned to us the buyers from the cities that, uh, that were using the word refuge mm. to him are you finding that with the buyers you're dealing with at the moment particularly with the current situation and the, the virus that's around and the publicity associated with it Yes, there is a big demand from the city to find a few acres that they can keep away, grow their own, as it were, mm -hmm. the chooks, the ducks and the veggie patch. That inquiry has always been there, but it has dramatically, the inquiry, not actually the movement yet, but that will follow. The interest in the area is certainly there, yes. We both uh, had the, the, the pleasure and the good fortune to live here for big slabs of our life. I, I'm like you, I share confidence in the area, mm. I see it uh, and even in these tough times and in other parts of the country it's been very difficult. I can feel it when I, I talk to buyers and, and, and who wish to come to the area. Thanks very much Greg for spending time with us here this morning. My pleasure, thank you.